Okay, so before we get started, let's talk about saw blades for just a minute. Now, when you buy a brand new saw, typically they come with a blade, but the blades they come with are usually just junk. So I recommend just either throwing them away or hanging on to them as a backup and get yourself a decent saw blade. Now, when you go buy a new blade, there's a whole wide range of saw blades you can choose from, all the way from the cheapest of the cheap, all the way up to saw blades that can cost $100 or $150 or more. Depending on your budget, that's kind of up to you. Personally, I like to go with kind of the middle of the road saw blades, not the bargain basement ones, but not the super expensive ones either. The reason for that is I like to get a good cut, and I find that those really, really cheap blades are basically like the ones that come with the saw. They don't work very well and they don't last very long. And the really, really expensive blades are just kind of a little bit out of my own personal budget. The benefit with the really expensive blades though, a lot of times you can send those off to be resharpened and you can use them over and over. Kind of the middle of the road blades like these Diablo blades that I typically get, when they wear out, you just go buy a new blade. They last a lot longer than the cheap ones, maybe not quite as long as the expensive ones, but it's a nice kind of happy medium there and that seems to work for me pretty well. But if you're finding that your saw blade isn't cutting quite like it used to, don't rush out and buy a new blade. It might just need to be cleaned as you can see on this one here, and I'll bring it in a little bit closer, there's a lot of buildup of resin and sawdust and sap from the wood that just kind of gums up the teeth on the blade. And when you pull it off your saw, you want to take a good look at it and make sure you don't have any chipped or broken teeth. This one looks like it's still in pretty good shape. I don't see any chipped or broken teeth on it. So it probably still has a little bit of life left in it. But that buildup of all the sap and the resin and whatever else gunk is built up on here, is just making it really tough to cut with this saw blade. Now there are saw blade cleaning kits out there. A Rockler sells some, I know some other companies do too, but they're kind of expensive. I've got a much less expensive way of doing it. It only cost me $2 to set up the whole kit and I'll show you what I use. So I went to the dollar store and picked up one of these cheapy, kind of shallow, I guess it's a cookie pan. Just made sure it was a big enough diameter to fit the blade. And also at the dollar store, just picked up one of these nylon dish brushes. And I have here just a little cup of laundry soap. I think the laundry soap works really well because it's designed to kind of cut grease off of clothes. So basic idea is pour a little bit of the laundry soap in here into the pan. A little bit of water going. I'm going to kind of take the brush and kind of stir it up to make sure they're nice and sudsy here. And just set the blade in the pan. Let's fill it up with water and then just let that sit for a while and then we'll come back and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so that's had about 10 minutes or so to sit and that's probably about long enough. Now all you need to do is take your little nylon scrubby brush and just kind of gently scrub the teeth. And I like to go kind of in the direction of the teeth. Kind of go with the grain, I guess you could say. Just make sure you work your way all the way around. Now it would be ideal if you could find a shallow plastic lid or pan to do this in. This is steel, but it's kind of really soft and flimsy. I'm not too worried about chipping a carbide tooth in this, just as long as I'm careful. Maybe if I ever come across a plastic lid that will work, I'll kind of make that change. But this seems to work pretty well. I've never had any problems with chipping teeth in a pan like this. We'll flip it over and we'll do the other side now. Okay, and once you've worked your way around, all the way around both sides, you also need to get the face of the tooth and the top of the tooth. It's a little bit trickier, but again, I just kind of go with the, with the grain here. Once I have the top edge of the teeth cleaned and both sides of the teeth cleaned, I need to clean the front facing edge of the teeth as well. It's a little bit harder to get in there with a big scrub brush like this. You certainly can, but if you have a old toothbrush laying around, 
it'll make getting in between the teeth a little bit easier. And one little tip just to make sure you get all the teeth and get all the way around is you can either pick a spot on the saw like this little dark mark right here as a starting point and then work my way around or just take a sharpie and put a little line there so you know you've made your way all the way around and haven't missed any teeth. Okay, and once that's done, I might just want to take the brush and just kind of clean the, the face of the blade as well. Get any buildup of resin off that as well. Okay. Probably good enough. Let's set that aside. And we'll just rinse it off real quick. And set it in the drying rack to drip dry. Oh, and if you don't have a drying rack in your shop, go ahead and click this link right here. And I'll show you how to make a custom drying rack just like this one. Okay, the blade has had plenty of time to dry. Let's take a look, see how we did. Well, looks pretty good. There's no pitch or sap or resin buildup. It almost looks like a brand new blade. So let's go ahead and put it back in the saw and see how it cuts. Whenever you're doing any kind of maintenance on any kind of power tool, checking the blade, removing the blade, making any adjustments, always unplug it first. You don't want to accidentally hit the power button and cut your finger off. And hey, it's just that easy. With a few items I picked up at the dollar store in a few minutes of my time, I just saved myself from having to spend $50 or $60 on a brand new blade. Even these moderately priced blades, the 12 inch size, they're pretty expensive. And I'll definitely get a lot more use out of this blade, get my money's worth, and I'll be able to get back to work quicker because I won't have to go to Home Depot to pick up a new blade either. If you'd like to help support the channel so that I can continue to make videos like this, there's two easy ways you can do that. The first is really easy. Just keep watching the videos, give a thumbs up if you like the video, leave a comment, be sure and subscribe if you haven't already. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.